Hey everybody, I am John Bartos. I am a senior software engineer at JW Player on the player team, and I'm also one of the core maintainers of HLSJS. And today I'm here to talk to you about low latency HLS, not anything technical or implementation wise. Uh, Will wrote the book on that yesterday, which makes my life easier. But I'm here to talk about kind of the problems we as an open source project have faced trying to implement LHLS and why an open standard is like an incredibly value, valuable tool for overcoming these problems. Along the way, I'm hoping to give you guys a bit more insight into how like an open source project thinks and works and executes on really large projects. So for those of you who don't know, HLSJS is a free and open source JavaScript HLS client, which means that you know, we do everything in the Panto spec that says the client should and sometimes must. And we also transmux MPEG TS to FMP4 in real time, which means that you can use HLSJS on Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer, of course. Um, and we are very popular. I don't know if you could read that, but we are doing 753 million embeds on JS Deliver, which is just a free public CDN, which puts us as three quarters of a jQuery. Um, this has gone up, and I just got sick of updating this slide. But on private CDNs, we're also doing another you know, five billion plus hits a month. Um, I'd like to think it's because of how awesome our project is, but I also think it reflects the popularity of HLS as a format. Despite its popularity, HLS has kind of a big problem, and that's with latency. So the time between capturing a live stream and it's showing up on a viewer's playback device is probably about 30 seconds plus today. And so instead of explaining why that's a problem, got cut off, then why that's a problem, I'll show you a testimonial from some guy in Hacker News who says, you know, there's a lack of concern from latency and one minute, it says over there, is shocking and 10 seconds is even bad enough. This is just some random thread I saw in Hacker News I decided to put in this presentation. But there's also another problem in which developers who want to build better live experiences and new things like second screen, uh, companion screens, and live interactivity really can't because our current technology doesn't allow you to do that. So what LHLS does is um, aims to reduce your latency from 30 seconds to about two seconds under the best conditions without upending your video stack which means that um, you can continue to reuse like your CDNs, your encoders, uh, your MSE-based player. You don't have to use WebRTC or trick your users into downloading you know, Flash for RTMP. What we're proposing is an augmentation to HLS instead of like a new, completely new format. So LHLS is actually super simple. And again, Will covered this yesterday. It's a chunk transfer based system, which means that um, the client and server agree to create a pipeline between the transcoding service and the client. And what, that, what they do is then uh, push instead of pull segments directly off the transcoder to the client where we immediately buffer it. And this helps us overcome some of the fundamental latency that is introduced when actually delivering a live playlist. But despite the simplicity, there's another problem with LHLS, and that is barrier to entry is just too damn high. LHLS today exists only on proprietary platforms, which are great. You're watching this on Twitch now with uh, low latency streaming. You're probably getting about three seconds, which is incredible, but you're not going to take Twitch's player, or you can, and put it on your website. There is no free and open source and well-maintained client that is doing LHLS today. And that makes it really hard for someone without a ton of talent or time or resources to take advantage of this great new technology. So your only options for LHLS today are to bind to a platform or to try and build it yourself. Um, it's only fair to mention that someone actually did do LHLS with HLSJS, but you didn't update your branch, your fork, in seven months. You can't expect people to uh, be downloading and using that over master. But please, uh, if you're from Fresh Live, find me after class. So what HLSJS wants to do is empower developers with a free, open, and easy to use low latency client, probably one you already use today. HLSJS helped commoditize HLS on the web by doing this today. And I believe that we can do the same with LHLS. 
but why standardized, right? Not to let a web comic, you know, help me make professional decisions, but there are problems with standards, clearly. But um, the reality is that there, we, we cannot do HLS, uh, LHLS alone. We're not just the client. We also need agreement from the servers. We need to work together and deliver a low latency stream that we both understand. And remember this, low latency segments are advertised in the playlist. There's actually no single agreed upon way to advertise a low latency stream. So there are vendors today who are doing LHLS or who have DM'd me on the video dev Slack and said, I have an LHLS server. Will you make it work with HLSJS? Well, that was, you know, eight people have come to me with that. How do I know that your solution works for everyone else? And we possibly don't have the resources to actually implement eight different solutions. And each implementation actually has like huge implications for performance and scalability and backwards compatibility, which matter for a lot of different people. So we can't really build just one thing uh, without asking you whether it works for you. We need to have consensus around a single implementation, which tries to make people as happy as possible. And an open standard is the tool to do this. What an open standard does is creates an inclusive forum at scale for achieving consensus. And what, what I've done is I've taken my LHLS proposal and I've put it on GitHub. So the barrier to entry is having a GitHub account and finding this repository, which is I've blasted over uh, the video dev Slack. You don't have to pay me money, but if you have a pile of cash, that'd be nice. Um, you don't have to join an alliance for something. You could just come to GitHub and let us know directly if what we're building actually works for you. And we'll do our best to kind of take all the feedback and curve it a best solution that you know, makes everyone as happy as possible. And it's really important to get this done early. So uh, I'm sure you know how fast HLSJS moves with our release cadence. If we got it wrong, we would be delaying this feature by an order of months. By getting feedback before we build code, we're able to course correct through text instead of code and releases and NPM. Another cool thing is that open standards encourage collaboration. So there are a lot of hard problems with LHLS like AVR when you don't know your bitrate anymore, or catch up or SSAI. We can leverage the incredible diversity of people, of talent, of experiences and ideas of the video dev community to make a solution that's better than what we could have thought of on our own. And another interesting thing is that you have people who you might not have worked with or thought of initially coming into your proposal and saying, hey, I have a great idea. And that's exactly what happened with Will and Streamline and Chunky Monkey JS. Um, and I'm happy to say that HLSJS will be joining the new Chunk Low Latency CMAF World Order and will be delivering that with their initial release of LHLSJS. But they're not the only people helping us make this happen. And these great companies on the left have, or right, have pledged like uh, an indeterminate amount of support to the project, but at least they're helping. And here on the right, we have a breakout session at FOMS, which is like a two-day unconference before Demux. And if you weren't there, um, I'm sorry you missed it. But this is like the low latency session, and there are a ton of people interested in making this happen and helping us out and contributing. And I think this is just like one of the coolest things of working in open source is you just have an incredible amount of community and collaboration. So just a bit about on the proposal itself. So what we've done is we've created a backwards compatible superset of the latest HLS standard, A216 draft 03, the one that Pantos just keeps editing in his free time. And what we've done is, well, what that means is that you can make an LHLS stream with our proposal and deliver it to an iOS device and it'll just play as normal. You don't need to generate two streams if you don't want to. And our three design principles, I think, are really important for helping understand kind of what we've done with the project. So we've wanted to make it accessible, meaning easy, minimal, simple to understand, scalable. So trying to hit the scale theoretically of HLS, not just of viewers, but also breadth of features. Like we don't want to make something that doesn't work with ads because we all need to get paid. And the third one is good enough, meaning that we're targeting, say, two seconds plus of latency. We're not chasing sub-second at the cost of everyone who actually wants to use this. 
Right. So give us a hand. So this is how you could actually help. So one is participate. Um, you could go to this pull request and read the proposal and tell me if it sucks or if it's great or what you want changed. You could go to the LHLS room on the video dev slack, which is more of like a free forum discussion about low latency if you have more questions that aren't necessarily on the proposal. The second thing you could do is adopt and say like, hey, I'll build this and give us a test stream because we will be needing those. And the third is becoming a contributor to HLSJS. So um, as you can see, that 750 million is a lot. It was 500 million the week before. We're scaling, still scaling incredibly. And we do need people to just come in and help. And to make it easier, we have a bi-weekly call every Tuesday. Uh, the next one is next Tuesday, where all the contributors get in, listen to your issues, and help new ones get started. You could also join HLSJS on Slack, which has more information about that. Next steps. Finalize the proposal, um, and then at the same time, not to be held up, convince Apple to uh, put it in the spec. So if you're Roger Panters, please stand up. <laughs> Didn't think so. Um, but we're, we're doing our best to come with like a really solid proposal that is backed by the people who probably represent most of HLS playback on the web and give them something that is a no-brainer for them. Maybe he's already thinking about it, and this is just like the catalyst for them to work with us. And it's built. So uh, we're going to build MPEG-TS support, of course. You could still use that. Uh, it's LLC math, and we're hoping to have something eventually. That's it. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>